Okay, um, I had a debate or discussion with Jack Sarfati a little over a year ago, about a year ago, um, about non-commutativity and I had then self-published a book called There Is No Spoon where I included a lot of the discussion I had with Jack Sarfati and the back and forth we had and this discussion also included um, an online uh, live stream on uh, Alien Scientist uh, YouTube channel for Jeremy um, Rice and or Reese Reese is how his last name pronounced. Anyway, so I was making the claim that you know I I insisted to Jack that he needed to study Basil J. Hiley more and this whole time I I I ended up finding a. Um, critique of Jack Safadi um, by Basil J. Hiley and David Bohm, but it was from the 1970s. And I published this on my blog and that got over a thousand views, which is for my blog, that's a lot of views because most people don't read blogs. But um, I was just listening to a collaborator of um, Basil J. Halley. They co-authored a book chapter on quantum consciousness. And he's a neuroscientist in Finland. And uh, they held a symposium called the Mind Matter Symposium in November of 2021. And I had not listened to his talk yet because um, he starts the talk off saying he's using the older version of the Hiley Bohm um, model or the David Bohm model. And Basil J. Hiley says, yeah, that's fine. Go ahead. But then at the very end of the talk, um, this neuroscientist, his name's like Pavel. Um, I, I don't, I always, I, don't, I haven't figured out how to pronounce his last name yet. So it's like or something like that. And he, um, I, apo I apologize for not <laughs> figuring out his last name pronunciation. Um, but uh, he, he starts talking about Jack Sarfati's uh, back reaction model. And, and so then at the end of the, at, so when he's done, Basil J. Hiley's, he, says, I, I need to make a commentary. He says, everything was right, except when he started talking about Jack Sarfati. And he said that that, that that back reaction is not the same as the Bohmium quantum potential. And that the Bohmium um, quantum potential is a new quality of force that occurs from within. And then he says that um, because of it, it's non-commutative that um, there's no need to use a wave function and there's no need for a, um, a decoherence of a in quantum consciousness. There's no need for a collapse of the wave function. And he says that this is, um, this is uh, disturbing and he doesn't know what to do with it. That's what, Basil J. Hiley says so. Um, and then uh, they have more discussion. And then you can tell people are a bit riled up. They're, they're at this point, they're, they're talking about consciousness, which is always perplexing for scientists to try to discuss. And um, and so then Pavel then says, once again, he's like, well, we have to try to explain how we experience the external reality and that there has to be some kind of um, inter interplay from that goes back from physical external reality back to this quantum potential level. And so... Um, 
he doesn't know how to explain that. And that's why he was trying to use Jack Sarfati's um, back reaction uh, model. But um, Basil J. Halley makes very makes very clear and, and then he and then Basil J. Halley says, Well, you gotta realize that there's also the super uh, quantum potential. And so this super quantum potential again is the um it's the non commutative uh, dynamic that's going on where you have this what Basil J. Halley says is that the classical world emerges um, as an increase in, in mass from a change in the speed of the energy and that that then turns into a particle. And because it's a super quantum potential, what that's referring to is that non-local um, time reversed uh, non-commutativity where, you know, Basil J. Hiley explains that the mathematics has a left and right direction in the arrows that you use for what essentially would be like a uh, calculus from uh, two different time, time dif differentials. I don't, I mean, he doesn't, it, it's derived from the, um, matrices, which are discrete numbers. So he's, he is derived from the imaginary number being in the Clifford algebra being a um, non-commutative discrete um, resonance that can go in any direction of space. So that's how you get this backwards um, time effect that is super luminal. And that's why they call it the super uh, quantum potential. And that explains the spin and the relativistic um, aspects of, of the quantum um, non-locality. And so um, the, so I just wanted to post this video to just explain that Basil J. Hiley himself in 2021 explicitly states that Jack Sarfati's back reaction is not the same as the non-commutative uh, non-locality as uh, the proto-consciousness that um, Basil J. Halley is explaining uh, in his same talk at this Mind Matter Symposium in uh, 2021. And so I just want to get that out there because I'm just an independent researcher. And so for me to tell Jack Sarfati that, you know, because Jack Sarfati, he said to me, well, it's it's just the Clifford algebras. Um, it's just, you know, Basil J. Halley is using Clifford algebra. But my point was that um, the Basil J. Halley is emphasizing non-commutativity and that wasn't being understood by um, Jack Sarfati because he insisted to me that non-commutativity was just a quantum um, uncertainty in the measurement. So, you know, when you measure position, then that changes the, um, the momentum and vice versa. Um, the the um, location gets changed when you change the, um, the speed or the energy, I mean, of the particle. And so, um, of course, I'm not a scientist, I'm not a physicist, but the non-commutativity is something I discovered on my own from my music research that led me into meditation. And so when, um, this neuroscientist, he's wondering how the external world is then experienced through this um, non-commutative quantum potential. Uh, I already mentioned that in my last video, how the speed of light is the invariance, but there you have this holographic, um, what Basil J. Halley says is that it's a 
it's not a hollow hologram, but it's a hollow movement, what David Bohm called hollow movement, which would be this eternal dynamic and eternal motion of time and frequency where you have a negative frequency that's precognitive from the future. And so when you have your eyes open, there's a speed of light interaction uh, through um, biophotons, which was a, you know, a coherent signal. But the more you meditate, the deeper the energy level goes as a virtual, um, you know, what, what would normally be subconscious for other people then becomes <clears throat> a real time uh, super consciousness, what, you know, they would call super consciousness, but it works through this non-local um, energy dynamic that's, that's then ex experienced holographically based on the, the frequency of the light internally in the body of the person experiencing it. So you're directly interacting with this impersonal energy that is constantly translating the frequency of the light of energy of matter around you ex externally. So I'll give a few examples. Um, I've mentioned these before, but they kind of give an example. So when your eyes are open, they, the light goes out of, out of your eyes at the speed of light. But that interaction is then triggering this deeper, non-local, <clears throat> um, what, I, what I would call the magnetic moment of the virtual photons. So it's, it's like the information that's the intention of, the, of another person that it would be stored um, subconsciously in their body. So um, when I sit in uh, full lotus, that causes the energy then to be focused in the central channel of the body. So that's how it's working. It's the pineal gland of the third eye in the center of the brain that works as, as like a transducer of the biophoton signals. And so that energy can then go out of the back of the brain as well, but it's also omnidirectional. And then the more you build it up, uh, the Qigong masters, they're able to actually see in, inside other people's bodies. And also they're, by looking into someone's eyes, they're able to see the past lives of the other person and also their future. And you can also get information by touching things, you know, what they call it psycho, uh, psychometry, psychometry in um, paranormal studies. But if you touch an object, you'll get a, um, you'll feel a vibration and then you'll get a, um, inf a frequency information from that um, vibration of the object that you're touching. And I had that happen twice. Um, once was a book by Ramana Maharshi. It was a, a self-published book from his ashram, and the book was published in the 1940s. And right when I picked the book up, I, all of a sudden I felt this really strong um, electrical vibration from the book. And that was in the South Asian um, Indian library. But to feel that, you have to be able to connect with it. You know, your own energy has to be able to resonate with it. So they also call that a kind of um, grace, that you're able to receive the grace. You have to purify yourself through meditation to for your body to be able to pick that up. And um, so the healing experiences can be, like, intense because you have to when you holographically uh, detect a blockage in somebody else, then you have to heal it in your own body when you do that. So you're constantly interacting with the external reality through the, the light, speed of light, but at this deeper um, quantum non-local holographic um, hollow movement process. So it's eternally going on. And so the more you meditate, the more this becomes a like precognitive process. So a great, a great book on this is called um, Transcendental Dreaming by uh, Christina Donnell. 
and she describes the precognitive uh, healing dreams that she experienced. And I, I uh, describe my experiences with this um, in my 2012 book, Alchemy of Rainbow Heart Music. I give uh, several examples that I experienced, but essentially the different organs of the bodies are of the body are are based on different emotional uh, blockages. So if somebody, um, you could all of a sudden you with your eyes open and you look at somebody, you make eye contact. All of a sudden, you'll get overwhelmed by a certain emotion that will get expressed in a certain organ of your own body. And then you have to heal that by um, resonating the energy back up, back to this non-local. Um, you have to like reverse the frequency of of the of the phase, and so the phase is then that negative frequency and time reverse signal. So, for example, Qigong Master Jim Nance he told me that. Um, when he healed people, he would re-experience the cause of their accident that caused the injury. And so he would literally like go back in time of that person's life and then uh, heal the energy, um, change, change the space-time cause that originally caused the accident in the first place. And then by doing that, he's able to then clear out the blockage that still exists in the present. And he said he used to tell people what they had experienced. And in order, you know, when he was healing them, he would tell them what had caused the, that, that accident and the blockage. And, but he said he had to stop doing that because, you know, people would freak out too much because it's like, <laughs> it's hard to believe this is happening. And I, I, um, this can be done long distance as well. So I had, I experienced somebody who um, was freaking out because in the class of uh, Qigong Master Chun Yilin, we practice long distance healing. And so he said, well, you know, tell me somebody who needs to get healed and I'll send them energy to heal them. And this lady in front of me said that in the class the week before when we had done this, she had mentioned that her friend was in the hospital and needed healing. And she found out later that the person had gotten healed, like right when uh, Chun Yilin had sent the energy, the person suddenly recovered and healed. I, I don't know what it was, but she was freaking out about it because she couldn't believe it. Um, she was getting really worked up and she was sitting right in front of me. And then, um, so then I, I noticed that, uh, Chen Yilin, he like nonchalantly raised his his arms up like he was um, yawning, like he was stretching to yawn. But as his hands went up, one of his palms faced the lady. And all of a sudden I felt this um, like electromagnetic blob kind of like explode onto the lady in right in front of me because it the blob, the energy like you know, I could feel the energy because I was right behind her. And it was like this blissful, blissful feeling of love um, with an electromagnetic kind of vibration to it. And then as soon as it like melted into her, then she just immediately calmed down and her mind was quiet. And <laughs> but nobody else in the class seemed to notice that this had happened because, you know, if you just saw what he was doing, it looked like he was just like listening to her while she was talking while he like nonchalantly was, um, like stretching his hands up to yawn. <laughs> um, okay. So those are just some examples. Uh, one time, Qigong Master Chen Yilin, he said, you know, he could say what percentage an organ was working in your body. And I had felt some heat on my right kidney. And this was the second class I took. So I went up during the break because he said people could ask him during the break. And so I asked him what percentage my right kidney was working. And he was standing in front of me and he looked at my right kidney, you know, from the front of my body. And immediately I felt this laser uh, heat 
just on my right kidney. And then, but it was like a blissful heat. And then he said about, um, I think he said like 70, 70% 70 it's working. And then um, I, um, you know, I just smiled because I was so shocked that I had experienced that all of a sudden this instantaneous like laser heat just on my right kidney. And, but it was, you know, it felt good. It felt like a healing energy. And then I just said, thank you. And that was it. I walked away and was like, wow, that's <laughs> really wild stuff. So um, those are some examples of how the ex external world would be experienced when you resonate. Um, I had another experience when, when I did the deep meditation, when I was fasting and I went to work and um, I could feel this energy going out of the center of my brain. It was like a electrical um, field and it went into the person um, across the room that I was working with. And then our boss came into the room and she immediately told the boss that I should get promoted. That <laughs> it was really funny. It was kind of weird, but I felt like I could sense her um, emotions and thoughts through the center of my brain, through the pineal gland. And around the same time, the day before, I had been hanging out with my friend at the coffee shop. And um, this has been probably that same night that I got back from the um, conference, that level three conference on that uh, Sunday. And um, he was sitting across from the table from me and all of a sudden, and I felt the same thing, this electrical force coming out of the center of my brain and he literally I didn't say anything to him about it I could just you know experiencing it and all of a sudden he just goes what are you doing to me that's what he said and um I just kind of smiled because it's like how do I explain what I'm experiencing you know <laughs> and I couldn't and I didn't know how to control the energy at that point I didn't know enough about the training to control it so there was a lot of other um experiences after that for years <laughs> and I'll just leave it at that. Thanks.